Hey guys, how's it going? So I recently introduced this guitar painting project um, and if you watched the video where I did so you will have noticed that this thing is in unfortunate condition and uh, has a sad sad story behind the paint job that I'm going to be doing on it. But anyway, the focus of this video is going to be fixing it um, to begin with. So as you will have seen before, and I'll just quickly review the very unfortunate condition that it's in. It's got some, uh, some pretty significant dents and nicks in it. Kind of looks like USPS might have, uh, I don't know, dragged it behind the truck or thrown it out of their airplane or something. Not really sure what happened. But uh, today I'm going to be trying to take the paint off of this thing as efficiently as possible so that I can fix it. And I'm going to try and get it done, like I said, efficiently and quickly uh, so that it's not going to cost the customer a bunch of extra money. So we've already got some pretty big chips out of here. And uh, I'm going to start trying to basically just chip it off of there. Not necessarily one of the uh, methods that I recommended when I did my how to remove the paint from your guitar video. But I think it's going to be uh, quick if I can get it to work. If not, we'll have to go with something more... I don't know what the word is. Normal. Let's go with normal. Uh, so I'm going to pull the camera in closer here and pull out some very sharp chisels and see what I can do with this. So I'm going to start in on this corner here. These chisels that I'm using are basically sharp enough for me to shave with. I'm just going to move around a little bit here so it's more comfortable to work on. I'm trying to get under the finish. Okay. Hmm. That's sticking pretty good. That wood, wood is damaged there, so a little bit of it, sorry, a little bit of it has stayed on there. That's going to require some filling. You got to be very careful when you're doing this as I'm being to try and make sure that you're getting under the paint but not into the wood. I'm going to start I the clear coat is starting to separate from the black. So I'm going to start by peeling off the clear coat. So this being a poly finish, uh, the clear is very, um, I'm not really sure what the word is. It's, it's all in one separate layer, that's I guess what I'm going for, as opposed to having melted into the previous layer like a lacquer would have. So that kind of allows me to chip it off, sit, sorry I just nudged the camera, chip it off separate from the paint like I'm doing right, right now. This is why you should never take a chisel to your guitar. <laughs> Alright, so that appears to be working. I think you all get the idea. There I am into the second layer of black. There will be several coats on here. And by several I mean most likely two. Looks like two. No need for you to watch that. I'm going to continue doing that across the face of the guitar and uh, we will return when I've made some progress. Alright, so now I've used the chisel, oh this thing's leaking again, use the chisel to take all the clear coat off, that's the most resilient part, at least I think I got all the clear coat off, yeah it's a layer, another layer of black. I got some of that second layer of black off as well, but uh, it starts to get a little bit finicky at that point. So now, now that the most resilient part of the paint has been removed, I'm going to go ahead and start sanding into this uh, with my dual action orbital sander and see if I can pull the rest off that way. After I make sure I've used the chisel as much as possible, of course. Because it's faster. But you have to be very careful when you're working with the chisel on something like this. It's very easy to gouge into it and just make the problem worse. Wear a mask when you're doing this. This paint has uh, chemicals in it, 
and they get into the air and that's very bad for you. Alright, so we're starting to see some wood coming through there. Getting through this okay. Again, there's no point in you watching me do this and also I feel like wearing a mask now and I don't usually film while I'm wearing a mask. So, I'm going to get on with this off camera and we'll come back when I've made some progress. So I've got most of the paint off of here now. Not all of it though. Still got some areas that are fully glossy that I haven't attacked yet. Um, now you can sand it all off by hand. I didn't do that. I used a variety of tools and machines for it. Uh, there should be some video up for that. Uh, either before what I'm saying right now, you've already seen it, or you're about to. <laughs> anyway, you can do it all by hand just by sanding. I can't because nobody's willing to pay me to do that. It takes, uh, it takes a long time and is thus more expensive and this is a customer job. So doing it quickly and efficiently to the greatest of my abilities. But I'm gonna do what's left by hand. So really there's not a whole lot to it. When you do your flat areas, use your palm, not your fingers. Or better yet, use a block, okay? You don't want to use your fingers because you can leave grooves and uh, they might be subtle, almost impossible to see on the wood, but when you paint it, you may notice them. So use your palm for stuff like that, for areas like this, which I have to sand out because they're, they're not as smooth as they should be after the machine. Same deal, use your palm or a piece of rubber or a piece of stiff, not stiff, uh, relatively dense foam. Works great for this. I've already done most of it, so I'm just using my palm to finish it off. So I'm going to smooth this all out using this method because I, uh, I used uh, a belt sander with a very fine belt, I believe a 220 grit belt, but still it's a belt sander, so it's not going to be perfect. And also uh, about the same on the spindle sander. So now I've got 220 grit paper and I'm just going through and smoothing this edge and I've got to go back over my routered edge because I've got a little bit of tear away there. And then for this area, I don't need to pull the paint off here. I've got all the edges eased back to the way they should be now. Uh, so what I'm going to do for that is just take some gray scotch Bright. Red is equally good for this. It's just a little coarser. Uh, green might be a little too coarse. Brown is too coarse and white is too fine. So gray or red was the moral of that long story. And I'm just gonna make sure that I've got that real good and scuffed up. 
so that my paint will stick to it, my sealer. So what you want to do is just keep scuffing it until it all looks very nice and, uh, and scratched and that gloss is all knocked back. Now obviously this is a painted surface so it doesn't matter what direction I go in, I can use circles, whatever. When you're doing your wooden surface, you want to try and stick with the grain if you've already pulled all the finish off. So that's the As you know, not everything sands out. And when I showed you this at the beginning, you will have noticed there were some pretty deep dents in here. Uh, some <laughs> fairly significant problems. So I increased the round over on the edges here because that's where a lot of the damage was and I wanted to save the customer some cost by doing that because it's way quicker than me filling everything. So now the tear away on that obviously needs to be sanded. I've already done a fair bit of that. Um, but some of, some of the damage didn't come out just from that, as I, I wouldn't have predicted that it would have. Uh, they were pretty bad dents. So my next step then is to fill them. And they're considerably less deep than they were before. So it won't be a huge problem. You just want to make sure some of them were areas that were caved in. I'm pointing to stuff you can't see right now. but Some of them were areas that were caved in and the paint was smashed in there but it was still glossy. You need to take that gloss off and sand them so that your filler will stick. To fill these damaged areas, I'm just going to be using some wood filler, generally some water-based wood filler here. Uh, this is Elmer's, LePage works fine, or any, any wood filler works fine. This is the same kind of stuff if you saw my grain filling or pour filling video for a smooth finish. Uh, no wait, that was a different title. Anyway, if you saw my, uh, my video on using paste wood filler, this is the stuff that I would thin down and apply using that method. Um, but for this, I don't need to thin it down. I need some bulk in there. And I'm really just going to apply it. Just going to use my finger and apply some. Oh, there's some, some dry stuff on the end that's making it a little difficult on me. But I'm just going to use my finger and apply some here once I get some out. It's pretty thick to the problem areas. And I'm going to leave some excess on there that I can sand out after and make it all the same shape. So really, I don't know why this is so thick. I might actually thin this down a little bit. I don't think so, but no, all good. I'm gonna press that into the dents. And for the bad ones, I'm gonna have to fill them more than once. So I'll just press some in there, wait, sand it, press them in there again. And for the small ones, I should be able to get them all done at one time. You can also use body filler for this. Uh, Bondo is a little aggressive. It would work for some of the bigger stuff, uh, but then you would have to go over it with something finer afterward. Maybe not, not that, but perhaps icing. Icing is a good glazing putty. That would be good for this. I'm trying to stick with something a little more like wood for the moment. But for more aggressive um, dents, using Bondo first, then sanding it, and then applying icing over top like you would for car damage is a good option. So as you guys have seen here, body repair for a guitar is a relatively time consuming but pretty straightforward process. Really the gist of it is you sand, fill, and sand again. Now this was a fairly complex one because of the type of damage on it, so I used a router, kind of uh, changed the edges that way. This is all stuff that you can do by sanding, might be a little less precise and a little less uh, no, a little more time consuming, really, but it's doable. So sometimes to speed things up, you'll want to uh, scrape off maybe the clear coat like I did on this one because it was a poly finish, different layers of paint, 
scraped off the top layer and was able to sand relatively quickly. You might also want to get your hands on an orbital sander. Be very careful if you're going to use a belt sander. Belt sanders eat away at wood very quickly. They're very aggressive. I was using a very high grit paper on mine and that kind of prevented me from having too much of an issue with it. So that concludes the body repair video. There really wasn't too much detail to get into on this. Uh, there weren't any cracks or anything, so just filling and sanding. Join me next time. I'm going to start painting this guy. We'll get some uh, sealer on here and, and get to work on the airbrushing. So that's a wrap for today. As always, thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe if you're interested in this stuff and how this project turns out and whatnot. And I'll see you next time.